Hi everybody, thanks for joining me as we get ready for our first uh, snowstorm we've had. And this is going to be mostly pure snow, although it does look like maybe a little bit of sleet uh, in far southern Vermont. May or may not mix in. We're going to talk about um, what will cause the sleet to happen or not to happen. Got my first look at a snowfall map for you and um, all the details basically to come about what's going to happen with this storm. So that's what's happening here. Uh, let's take a look. We've got quite a bit to go through today, so uh, thanks for joining me here. Um, first, let's start off with our where we are currently. Um, all of our rain came through with our storm that's actually just still to our west, but we kind of uh, have gotten through the bulk of the precipitation as the forcing for the precipitation has moved well to our north and east, um, except for a few sprinkles here this morning. And you'll notice temperatures very, very warm out there for an early February morning. Um, but to the west, uh, we have a big time cool down. First of all, we got a big time cool down across most of the central part of the country. We get temperatures uh, in the single numbers in northern Texas. We blow zero across most of the Great Plains, and we're well below zero up in Minnesota, pushing 20 to 30 below zero in northern Minnesota. So um, we're not going to move this that much cold air in here, but this cold air is on the on the move, and also we've got cold air north of us. And so what happens is, as this storm is going to drag some cold air in, um, as our next storm system gets going, which is really kind of getting uh, just getting started here across the west um, and is starting to get some um, subtropical jet stream moisture associated with it, it's going to kind of force the the, uh, the boundary layer that this one follows to be much further south than it has been with the last couple of storms, which is going to put us on more of the snow side of this storm. Um, again, it also, the storm is going to redevelop off the coast. That often happens when a storm tracks closer to the coast. Usually it does redevelop off the coast because that's usually where the greatest temperature differences are, and that will be the case for this storm. Um, but the question is exactly how fast does it transfer its energy because what will happen is if it doesn't transfer its energy as quickly, um, we won't lock the cold air in at the mid-levels, um, and that will push some sleep. Uh, up from the south. So um, we're going to talk about that as we get going here. Let's take a look first though at your upper level storm. We got a big piece of energy here in the upper jet stream or the northern jet stream, I should say not upper, but big piece of energy here uh, crashing down across northern California, um, which is forming that storm across Arizona, New Mexico here in the next day or so. Um, also, you can see here's the southern jet stream uh, as depicted on the uh, 500 millibar map. Um, you can see we've got lots of energy. This is basically, like I said, all winter La Nina. You've kind of had this southwest to northeast flow, um, bringing lots of moisture um, and giving lots of opportunities to tap golf moisture. Also moving warmer air across southeastern, the southeastern part of the United States, which has moved up in our direction quite often. Very, very, very common for La Nina pattern. Um, Here's a different depiction. Here's uh, where the actual winds are. This is at the very top level of the atmosphere. And you can see we've got some northern jet stream energy, and it's going to connect with this southern jet stream energy for the next storm. And that's really when you get the two, when you get northern and southern jet streams to phase together, um, that's where you tend to have your most, uh, where, you, where you develop strong storms and stronger storms. The storm is actually never going to get super strong. Um, if you look at it, it's tilted. Uh, uh, yeah, this way from like southwest to northeast. That tends to keep things uh, moving right, right along progressively and doesn't allow storms to get super strong like we saw some earlier in the winter. So the storm isn't going to be overly strong, but it's going to have lots of moisture um, and it's going to be strong enough. Um, and particularly with the redevelopment, it's going to hang around long enough to give us a significant snowstorm, right? Um, unlike hurricanes or something like that, um, when it comes to winter storms, it's not always about the raw strength of the storm, but um, first of all, where you are temperature-wise um, and also um, how much moisture is involved and things like that that play a big role as to whether or not we see big, especially for uh, snow totals. Um, for things like wind and stuff, storm strength still matters. This won't be an overly windy storm, um, so you have that to look forward to. Uh, in terms of, uh, let's take a look at the storm track. And we can see that this is pretty complicated. So the storm across the southwest um, United States will kind of translate across and continue to develop uh, uh, over southern Texas and kind of the Gulf states. By Thursday evening, um, it's over probably northern Mississippi or so, uh, western Tennessee. Um, already, we won't have developed, but we'll be starting to develop uh, some uh, a weak low area of low pressure off the east coast. And like I said, this is a typical setup. It's not unusual to have a storm that kind of dies as it goes northwest of the Appalachians and then redevelops off the coast. But the question with the storm is exactly how quick is this storm going to redevelop and uh, how much cold air will it lock in. As this storm starts to get stronger, it'll turn the flow more northerly and it'll lock in colder air quicker. Um, so um, for the most part, it's looking like uh, this 
the low pressure along the coast is going to mostly win out here as it heads in our direction, not initially, but as it heads in our direction, which will lock the cold air in here over southern Vermont. But um, some of the mesoscale models particularly are a little slower to do this. Um, the NAM, if you're familiar with the different types of models out there, which is kind of the North American uh, mesoscale model, um, wants to be a little bit slow with this transition and allow some mid-level warming to happen. Um, and I think that's not impossible at all. I do think we'll probably see a little bit of sleet in southern Vermont. It'll be a little bit, and it won't be. It will only cut down on, on snowfall totals a little bit. So when we get to the map, we'll see. It's not going to mean that some people get almost no snow and some people get a foot and a half, like we've seen sometimes this winter. Um, it means that uh, some of us will just get a little more sleet at the end, which will cut down accumulation numbers a few inches. So, anyways, uh, by Thursday overnight, you can see this storm is basically heading uh, due north. Uh, northeast and will end up in western New York. Um, but by the time it gets to western New York, it really is dying, and this is becoming the prominent low. Um, and we've got all this warm advection of uh, moisture that's coming kind of between these two systems, which is going to push into southern Vermont um, overnight Thursday into Friday. And eventually, by the time we get to Friday evening, this storm has taken over and it's dragging everything out to sea. Um, let's take a look at where I think that mixed precipitation will happen. So I think um, won't make a huge difference on elevation. Um, elevation, elevated areas maybe get a little bit less uh, mixing, but you know, kind of a little bit of a nose south there. But in general, this is like the southern half, southern third, the southern half or so of Bennington and Wyndham counties, I think they get into the sleet. And again, this won't be for the majority of the storm. It goes, comes towards the end of the heavier precipitation. Um, and then we'll actually probably change back to snow as the storm heads out to sea, although by the time it changes back to snow, most of the accumulation will be over. Um, but north of that, basically all snow. This line could move. Um, if the storm uh, in, it stays stronger, uh, the, the storm on the western side, the upper kind of the, uh, that, uh, the original low stays stronger and longer, this line could move further north. I could see it moving as far north, maybe even as Rutland, potentially. I don't think that's going to happen, but that would be under like a most sleet-filled uh, scenario, or this line could move well down into southern, uh, or is as far south as the southern Berkshires or something like that. Um, and so sleet is not a guarantee at all, I don't think, for southern Vermont. But I think if I had to draw a line right now, this is what we're going to say, um, knowing that this could move north 40, 50 miles and south 40, 50 miles at this point. Hopefully we'll have this more locked in by tomorrow, have a better idea of exactly how quick that transition is going to happen. And like I said, Unless it moved way north, I don't think it's going to affect precipitate, uh, snowfall totals too, too much because it's going to snow. The bulk of the precipitation is going to come as snow before sleet mixes in. All right, so let's take a look at what I'm looking for for snowfall totals. Um, we're basically looking at, I think, for this storm, um, uh, the green, southern greens will basically be in the bullseye, I think, 10 to, 10 to 14 inches. Um, that could even be bumped up a couple spots for the highest elevations. I think the ski areas could easily see 16 inches out of this, places like Stratton, Okemo, maybe even down as far as uh, Mount Snow. Um, if you start to head north, you get a little further away from the storm, snowfall totals start to come down a little bit. So I think a place like Killington is probably more like 12 to 14 inches. Uh, in terms of the rest of us, where most of us live, a general 8, or 8 to 12 inches in the blue section here, um, which includes most of our counties. Um, however, if you're down in those areas that are going to get sleet and in the lower elevations, I think 6 to 10 is more on the range. So still a pretty good dumping of snow, plenty to plow, um, and it'll be mostly snow, but enough, but a little bit less. And then, like I said, those high elevations across the greens um, where you get the 10 to 14 inch snowfall totals. Let's take a look at the details. Precipitation begins after midnight Thursday night. Uh, probably before 2 a.m. for most of us. Heaviest precipitation between 4 a.m. and 10 a.m. So the morning particularly will be really rough travel-wise on Friday. Um, easily could be getting snowfall totals of, or snowfall rates of 1 to 2 inches uh, uh, as the snow heads in our direction. And basically, you want to make sure that you're, uh, if you got to only travel if you have to on Friday morning. Uh, sleep may mix in over southern Bennington and Windy Windham counties. We, saw, we showed you where the line was going to be on that potentially. Storm is mostly snow. Uh, even where sleet mixes in, so we showed you that with the accumulations. And snow comes to an end by Friday afternoon, at least accumulating snow. We may still have some flurries in the air till Friday evening. But for the most part, travel should improve Friday afternoon and evening, um, although probably um, will still be a little tricky, particularly um, on uh, secondary roads through Friday evening. It's really not till Saturday morning that we're fully cleared out, probably. Uh, snow will be light and fluffy for the most part. It will be cold, except where you get some sleet mixed in, and then it's not going to be the kind of stuff that sticks on trees. So I don't think there's any power outage potentials with this, um, but it will. Whenever you get that sleet, it just kind of makes the top layer kind of compact some. That's actually what will actually affect the um, accumulations the most. But where we don't see any sleet, it will just be a light, fluffy snow, good skiing, good powder kind of snow, easy to clean up. So 
that's what we're looking at right now. I will be back again tomorrow morning with an updated look at the forecast because certainly some things could change. Hopefully by then we'll have a better idea of exactly where that sleep line will end up. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel before, I would encourage you to do so. Um, and if you uh, are interested in supporting financially what I do here at the River Weather Guy, you can uh, visit my Patreon page. It talks about some of the benefits and some of the things you get as a patron. As a matter of fact, this afternoon I do a weekend forecast for my patrons. I do that every Wednesday afternoon. Um, everybody else has to wait till Friday for my weekend forecast. So uh, if you're interested in that or if you just want to get email, weather, all these, uh, all the links to videos emailed to you so you don't have to search them down, that's an option, uh, one of the options that's for my patrons. Um, there's also one where I do an extended forecast. So um, those are some of the options. Uh, thanks for supporting my channel however you do. And I will be back tomorrow morning with a updated look at the storm.